So as you may have gathered, this is not the fortnightly Adventures in Middle-earth broadcast. We're due to play that session on March the 29th with a hopeful edited release for you on the 2nd of April. Instead, this is another Rollmaster classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on World Anvil, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Demons of the Burning Night 2 Part 6. Last episode saw the end of the fight with the sprightly disc-throwing spirits, some healing and a cursory look over a gazebo-like structure. The artifacts still elude the group, so this location may require a little more investigation. So you can wait for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, night never seems to fall on the city, nor does morning happen, nor does there never seems to be any change in the day at all. The level of light stays the same, temperature stays the same, nothing seems to alter at all. But again, as you glance upwards, you see that the sun and moon flash erratically from left to right and from right to left above you. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, so I grab some well wool while everyone was away. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So time doesn't seem to, as we said before, happen the way it's supposed to happen in this city. So there's no nightfall, there's no morning, but you do manage to rest. After a couple oh. of hours, Ubnan, you're up on your feet again. Cool. Do you want to head towards the gazebo and explore it some more? Or do you want to go somewhere else? Has everybody had a look around it yet? No, they got just to the statues, to the edge of the statues, and then thought better of approaching closer without a healer. Okay. Well, uh, what's up? I'm happy to fly over the top and back. Okay. Uh, okay, Agnan. Jerry, lead the way. Okay, so you can all move past these eerie statues. Uh, you know what? I, um, N- Numal speculates that there's five there's five weird spiraling artifacts inside or next to that raised platform, um, and there's there's five of those statues outside. Mm. If there's a connection between them. Maybe the statue was originally stood on top of the, the spiraling artifact. Oh, there were five of those shards or vast creatures. There were, yeah. Ah, yeah. Everything's in fives. So have we neutralized it, or is there something more that could threaten us? Don't know enough about it. Those and creatures. Gee, structure. Sorry, Go ahead. the structure. No. Um, you, you say it's raised. Is it? Are those steps that going up onto that sort of lighter green circuit? Yes, there are. Yeah. And those pillars, or they look like pillars that the the, the grey squares. Yeah. Those. Are they, are they supporting those are supporting the roof. Okay, so there's a roof. There's a roof on top of the structure. A circular yes. roof. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Except one of the pillars has collapsed, and then that that rectangle in the middle. Um, yep. And apologies if I wasn't paying attention, but h- how much higher off the green? It raises about there? three feet off the green. So it's a large. It looks to be made of stone. It's a large, uh, white rather than marble, white sort of rough stone platform uh, altar. Difficult to tell. Ogden's going to go around the circumference, just see if you can find any Noretti writing. Okay. Give me a perception roll, please, Ugnan, as you walk around. So, Ugnan, you walk, do a complete circuit. You can see in one place, one of the pillars has collapsed. That's at about uh, two o'clock. Otherwise, all of the pillars seem to be holding, the rest of the pillars are holding the roof upright. There's no writing on this stone floor at all, on the lip, on the floor itself, or on the edge that you see. Okay. The large central sort of altar, for want of a better word, doesn't seem to have any writing on it either. The only thing that really draws the eye are those weird twisted columns that you can see. So so Numa wants to investigate those clothes, yeah. Okay, so that with the purple arrows pointing, do you mean those columns? Yeah, those are the columns that are weirdly twisted. Okay. 
So, so Numal wants to investigate those more closely since he did glimpse something a few hours ago. The one thing I'd ask is, are those weird columns, are they part of the architecture? Um, or are they, you know, no. how are they connected to the floor? Or they seem to just be, so give me a, a perception roll, please, Numal. So it looks like they're standing on the floor itself. Um, but you can also see that there are faint scratch marks around the floor of all five of the pedestals as if they've moved or been moved. Standing as you are on top of the steps, can you give me a channeling resistance roll, please? Oh, no. Oh, okay. no. You get a very, very strong uh, sense of impending doom here. If you if you enter the green marble area, you have the strongest feeling that something very, very terrible will happen. Death is not the worst that can happen to anybody in this city. As you glance up, you can see um, almost as if they've been wrapped by spiders. You can see a number of what look to be um, well, figures, you can't quite make them out from where you stand. You're going to have to enter on the floor that are hovering in the air above the stone altar. There are about half a dozen figures. They all look ashen white, grey. Um, it looks as if they've been or, or they, they're kind of hovering about 20 feet up in the air, all above the stone all with their arms and legs dangling loosely at their sides, with their chests pointing up towards the roof, their heads lolling back. They're absolutely motionless, and you can tell by the colour of their skin that they're not alive. But they haven't rotted, they haven't decomposed. Numal starts pointing in an um, agitated fashion at, at the... At the floating bodies can the others are the others in a position to see them as well or if they come closer yes it? cherry this has been pointed out to you so you can give me a perception roll please sure okay cherry you can see pretty much what numal can see but not much else there are indeed about half a dozen bodies rubber. there <laughs> but that's about it that's all you can see uh silk you're close enough now you haven't mounted the steps you stand at the edge of the platform, so you can make a roll. Victor, you can make a roll as well. She sees Victor next to her all of a sudden, and she smiles at <laughs> Well played, Victor. <laughs> uh, perception? Yes, please. Victor, you can't tell much more than, than Cherry could ascertain, nor can you, Silk. There are, between you, as you confer, there are six bodies that are hanging in the air. Sorry. I said a, a dozen, didn't I? There are a dozen bodies hanging in the air, suspended, not that you can see any lines, wires or ropes, suspended, motionless, about 20 feet above the stone, about 15 to 20 feet underneath the roof, which is domed. I have a question. Yeah. Those uh, wood creatures that we had before, that we fought before, um, uh, did they disintegrate or something or are there still carcasses around the, the creatures that you've just fought their yeah. the bodies are still there they weren't okay. demons oh the... awesome uh, i might go back and start dragging a carcass with the idea of uh throwing it in there see what happens you can do okay you might so uh, I look for one of the smaller ones <laughs> yeah cran will give you a hand yep well, hang on, hang on. Before you do that, Ugden, have you ever heard of this stuff before? And I'll I'll look at the books that we got there, GM. One of them, as you said, shards. One of them says Clark Cash dash ton. Sh yep. Um, no, this hasn't got anything to do with the creature, the shard. Okay. Okay. I'm afraid. Got quite a few That's lore good. skills. I don't know if any of those are going to come in handy there, Stuart. I don't know if you want to quickly mm -hmm. look at those. Um. Not really. You you need to because otherwise this gets sort of a bit like a Scooby Doo thing, where you kind of say, "Well, I've got my book of clues. Give me a clue." Um, <laughs> if you can tell me 
what law you think you want you you think is germane to this um i can then give you a role greek mythology for 500 <laughs> okay yeah uh, greek mythology at minus 50 <laughs> Did Numol mention that they might not be alive at least? Yes. Us, or did you yeah, he that? can't. Uh, the fact that they're motionless but they've not decomposed despite the great passage of time is uh, perplexing. They seem to have been held in stasis, perhaps. Ugden, do you know any undead lore yourself? Like, no. So, not, I've got, I don't know. I mean, the best one I've got is Obscure, which is a catch all for a can be anything yeah but... give me an obscure law i think obscure law not to make this uh too difficult yeah an obscure law role will, will, will satisfy um okay that's not bad so there are i mean you yourselves have encountered at least one way of holding a body in stasis the seer that was you're trying to rescue patient's clute underneath the um old part of uh cell kai for example this is another sort of stasis spell power or effect but it's very, very different. You don't get the feeling that there's any... Whatever's holding these in place is not demonic as such. It's magical, and it's a magic that's perhaps emanating from, you suspect, the stone or the statues behind you or the weird twisting statues in front of you. Something about this place is holding these bodies in, in some sort of stasis. Whether they're alive or not, it's difficult to tell, but they're not decomposed. It's almost as if the souls have been removed and the bodies right. haven't perished okay i've given you a, a spell law as you're talking about spells and you talk about the stones again yep. your stone law well just in case any of those sparks in his mind the white stone that you can see is unusual but you can't tell more than that okay spell law you know that there are a variety of spells you've heard of not that they're in your realm per se there are a variety of spells which can separate somebody's soul from their body. The theory, a theory being that has been discussed beforehand is what would happen if the, if a spirit was separated from the body? Does the body become an empty vessel? Does that vessel, is that vessel still capable of being animated? And if so, by what? If that body is animated and is moving around, could it be inhabited by something else? That's sort of been a matter of conjecture for many, many years. The consensus being that, yes, it can be, it can be possessed. But what happens to the spirit? Where does the spirit go? And what stops the spirit snapping back like a piece of elastic into its host? Yeah, OK. So it could be that these things or these bodies, these poor unfortunates, are in some sort of stasis and their spirits have been separated from them. Where their spirits are, you don't know. But that could be a big leap. Mm. Um, Numal looks shaken as he retreats slightly down the steps, unwilling to go too much further. And Numal says, you know, is, is it, can we see anything about this place that um, is relevant to our quest, to what we're searching for? Is it worth um, provoking or whatever? Well, we're still searching for the entryway. Yeah. And that's our main reason to stop in here. Uh, and again, I'll note that you know, I'll say, and we've found plenty of things that have been helpful to us, usually when there's been challenges as tough as that last one. So, you know, it could be, could be something of import, could be a major clue. We're adventurers, damn it. Let us fight, whatever it is. <laughs> Wasn't there an idea to throw something into the... That's right. Like, yes, yes, I'm so still going for that. So I, I, we... Cran's assistance. Um, I want to load what I want to do because uh, I've got a strength of ninety, so that's not too bad. That's pretty strong. Um, I want to. I want to sort of fly, like I'm going to fly with the the creature and as a pendulum style thing. So I'm like I'm drag. I'm I'm flying lopsidedly, but uh, I want to like I want to fly in close enough to hoik the body underneath the underneath the thing while avoiding s interacting with those right. uh, the ring won't allow you to support um another creature of your weight which is what this thing is yeah uh, okay you can't quite fly with it 
I'm afraid. Okay. You uh, that's can, fine. With help, Crans, for example, because you, with your strength of 90, that is very, very strong indeed. You could, between the two of you, could have kind of swing the body up and onto the green marble floor to see what happens. That sounds good. Okay. So, Cran and Cherry, you mount the steps. You toss a body onto the stone and it lands with sort of a, a soft crump noise and flops over one arm splaying out and making sort of a fleshy slap sound on the stone floor for a while nothing seems to happen can you all give me perception rolls please right the first thing that you notice all of you notice is the stone pillars begin to move they begin to just twist and writhe but some of them begin to move towards the body on the floor. The next thing that you hear rather than see is a very, very faint song, but the song is horribly discordant. There are five different voices singing in a language which is unfamiliar to you, but all of them are singing at a slightly different uh, tempo, and they're singing slightly different words. So the noise is horribly discordant, but it's very, very faint at the moment, but beginning to swell and rise as the statues emanate. Cherry, uh, yes. Victor and Silk, you notice glancing upwards as habit would with, with experienced adventurers, that some of the bodies up above you are now twitching. You can see some fingers moving, wrists moving as if they're quivering and almost having a seizure. Victor, you can hear noise in the undergrowth to the sides as if something or things are forcing their way through the bushes, vines and uh, other vegetation. Oh shit. What do you want to do? So are these uh, suspended like by silk strands like you or can't, are they... No, you can't see any strands at all. There's no rope, no wires, no coils. They seem to be suspended. Well, by, by magic. The pure, by pure magic. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll let everyone know that I hear things coming from the sides. Yeah. So, Victor, you can hear noises. Uh, let me draw some arrows. So you can hear noises that way, that way, and also... Uh, that way. Now, I suppose the good news is that you remember the creatures that you've just killed, they communicated with each other via some sort of a, a strange clicking insect like noise. Oh, right. These yeah. creatures aren't making, or the noises that Victor can hear have no attached clicking sounds at all. So they're not more of these horrible creatures, but they are, there are things, quite a number of them moving towards you the suspended figures are beginning to twitch the columns are beginning to I'm move to as well think an arrow into one of the suspended creatures that's twitching because it freaks. okay so, so i'm just gonna pull back just give me a regular i won't call up the combat tracker just give me a shooting roll okay basically just don't fumble it yeah, it's not hard to hard to really sort of shoot a twitching body I'm sure that's why Dungeons & Dragons was banned by grandmothers for comments like that. <laughs> uh, okay, that's a hit. So you fire an arrow into one of the bodies. Can you give me a D12 roll? D12, wow. Yeah. It's been a while since just so I've I, used one. Yeah, I know, just so I know which one is hit. Okay. So the arrow thunks into one of the bodies. It continues to twitch, but doesn't respond to your arrow, which catches it in the back of the thigh as it sort of is twitching in the air above you. And, right. and do any of the the statues uh, change? Like everything was moving towards this one of the statues stop? Or No. So the statues continue to move towards the body, which uh, of the demon creature, which isn't moving. Right. Three of them uh, return to their original positions. The other two begin to change shape until they resemble uh, what looks like a, a twisted column with the head of a serpent. So that pointed apex um, changes shape so it resembles a, a large fanged serpent. 
the head is about the size of a small dog and the heads lash out from very serpentine bodies uh, hammering into the corpse on the ground as the snake's jaws catch on the body rather than kind of biting and letting go uh, these almost like dogs uh, tear rip and pull at the corpse on the ground trying to rip it and tear it and dismember it but they very quickly let go when the corpse of this thing that you killed earlier refuses to cooperate or respond they seem disinterested and as they retreat back quietly the strange uh, unnerving song that was emanating from the stone begins to you dim and fade away can you all make perception rolls please as the song begins to fade away the bodies stop their twitching and convulsing including the one that now sports an arrow from its right thigh the strange noises that victor alerted you to and that Cran immediately responded to. Uh, Silk, I'm just going to move you a little bit closer because otherwise you're actually out of eyesight of everything because of the vision, if that's okay. Silk's okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to move Silk back. So Silk has vanished. <laughs> okay, not that that should worry you, of course. But, that's right. That's right. Um, the noises that Victor alerted you to and that you started scanning nervously the, the murk and the filth for those have also stopped if anything was moving towards you it's either stopped or retreated or is now sneaking up on you aware of your presence pick whichever option uh you you wish what do you want to do next well victor will already uh remorse okay so victor readies his sword and stands in a guard position numal what do you want to do i think i'll do the same as victor Okay, so you ready else. yourself as well. Ugnan. I, uh, I think we leave this place well alone. If you think about Cherry's visions, it was water, uh, crystals, and the other one was a big building with a statue in it. I don't see none of that here. Well, I don't like any of this. It doesn't look like I can fight some of this. Okay. Can you fight a song? I can't. So you've got to take a few steps back. Psst, come under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> says, says a distant voice. So Ugnan, you can hear a a seductive feminine voice that you don't recognize as your companion whisper to you come under the security of this tree join <laughs> me <laughs> exactly is that, <laughs> is that you kadena <laughs> <laughs> okay uh cran is also cran's a realist like ugnan he can't see an obvious benefit from exploring this yes Whenever you've explored something dangerous, you found really, really useful stuff. But you're here for, on a mission. You're here to retrieve two things. You're here to retrieve the Ashling Stone and you're here to retrieve um, portal rods. None of these places look like the visions that Cherry had. So he's quite happy to retreat as well. Is there anything else you wish to do apart from retreat cautiously? No, I'm fine with that. Okay. I think that's right, good folks. thinking, Cherry. Very good thinking. So you can, if you remember, you can retreat uh, back if you want to move through the city, depleted as you are. You can retreat back to what you assume was Vramavare's palace because you had cleared that, whatever that means, um, and perhaps rest there if you wish. Uh, I don't Yeah, whatever's that. safer, I guess. How long have we reckon we've been here? I mean, it's a bit hard to tell, isn't it, um, because of the yeah. way that it works? Well, you've had <clears throat> one period of rest. Um, you are feeling fatigued. What, uh, give me intuition rolls. Tower? So some of you are feeling fatigued. No, you can make them in the open. Uh, there's no merit in, in really hiding this. Oh, 66. We're not very intuitive, are we? <laughs> <laughs> we all look to Ugnan. <laughs> so, Ugnan, um, all you can tell is, yes, as you look across the party, and it's probably appropriate that it's you that's detected this. Yes, you can detect every everybody in the party, even Silk, is somewhat fatigued and tired. But this fatigue and tiredness is not natural. Obviously, the climate that you're in, you're under great stress. 
Senses are always alert to danger and ambush. Plus, the air is unusual. There's something gone wrong with time in this cursed place anyway. Everybody is stressed and fatigued, but it's not a natural fatigue. So people are feeling tired, but you don't think that that can be used to mark a 24 hour period. Eating and, and, and food as well. You've gone quite a, a period without eating as well, which has struck you, Ugnan, as we should probably feel thirsty or hungry now. Yeah. But we don't. Does that it's mean time. that, yeah, does that mean time is being messed up, quote unquote, or does it mean something more sinister? Yeah, um, and I'm, Ogden's looking at Silk, you know, because I'm meta gamer here. I can see you're on absolutely zero power points, Matt. So he's looking at Silk oh, and seeing wow. she looks particularly drained. Oh, I think, um, look, it hasn't been too long since you rested. This is places place taken out of all of you. I can see it. I think we better go back, get lights kip, get some food in our bellies, and get going again. Give it, um, give it a few hours, or, or maybe an overnight sleep or something. There's, there's no night here, though. Yeah, good idea. Oh, I'm bloody knackered. Agreed. 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 Oh, you um, know what I really fancy? It's a nice tavern with oh, some nice cellar temperature beer, some pork crackling. A nice that's a euphemism for dancing girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, pork no, that's the, that's the, the ballet. Uh, we could watch the ballet. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, that'd be lovely. Cran's possessed. Get us the real Cran <laughs> ballet. Okay, so I've just popped when that map comes through kind of a blue circle around roughly where you are. Okay, it just came up. And that large grey object across to your, your southwest is the palace, of course. So if Ramaphair's palace would make most sense, it's closest and safest. Yes, um, it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll head back there. But yeah, I agree. I'm go back to the palace, maybe up to the top level again. Um, I think that's where it had like the the anti demon ward part as well. Yes, there was. Yep. So what you can do then is you can retreat. I think I've got that right. The correct room. So you can retreat. Retreat. Sorry, to the upper floor, where there was that um, strange black Nuretti uh, symbol forming. Um, some sort of ring of protection, perhaps. There was the altar. amber altar with that curious flask of something potent, which is begging to be drunk, that, that <laughs> you've had warnings that this could be very dangerous. Um, so you can certainly rest there, hard. and you can get your PowerPoints back, and you can do any natural healing that you wish. And some good food as well. Well, funnily enough, none of you feel that hungry, but you do feel tired. So what I'd, I'd like you to do, please, is to make a constitution roll. If you can get over 50, then you feel hungry and you'll eat. If you fail your constitution roll, then you just don't feel up for food. Well, I was speaking to the wrong group. You're all starving. <laughs> <laughs> Miss food? Good heavens, no. In fact, we rolled an 88. Victor, you little hobbit. <laughs> I shall have two oh, meals. Three. <laughs> yeah, make that three. Uh, Numel also is hungry, and Cran doesn't actually. Cran just uh, he's, just doesn't feel very hungry. Yeah, I could do with some root though. I got any of that? Actually, uh, I think you do. Oh yeah, we shared some of that last time we were up here, didn't? We? Yeah, we did. Oh, oh no, that's, that's, that's quite interesting. Cran, can you give me another Constitution roll, please? Okay. Cran doesn't feel the need for any rook. Ugnan, can you give me an intuition roll, please? Oh, very nice. Okay, Ugnan, so you note that Cran doesn't feel the need for any rook, which is good because obviously you've only got so much. Yeah. Um, you know, to metagame, if you'd made the roll, you could use, for example, his need for rook as a, as a clock mechanism. Oh, yeah. But... You failed to make that roll. So just to just see Cran scratching at himself, rubbing his nose a lot, yeah. <laughs> just rocking Fortunate. backwards and forwards, sitting holding his uh, holding his haunches. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're, you're in company now, crowd, because there's three other addicts with you. <laughs> yeah. You're all scratching. Oh my god! Well, I'm, you guys keep looking at me like I'm a big piece of turkey meat or something. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's a good job. Not, there's no animist in the party. 
yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you can rest up. You can get your mana back. Those of you that are capable of eating can eat. Um, Cran, you decide not to eat, but you don't take any penalties because of that decision. You just don't feel very hungry at all. The others eat a reasonable amount, but you just don't feel very hungry. Where do you want to head to next? Um, there's no night, there's no day, so it's difficult to tell how long you've been there. Some of you catch some sleep, but it's it's fitful at best. The city you discover as you try and rest is just not quiet. It's not loud, but you're plagued by distant noises of buildings crashing, fires, shrieks for help, uh, children crying, but also, and perhaps more eerie, uh, normal sounds, street sounds, vendors hawking their goods, uh, children playing, mothers telling off their children, husbands arguing with their wives, and so on and so forth. All of this is totally muddled up. Now, I think that when we fought the um, demon that nearly killed Cran, there that was holding some kind of black obstacle, like a, a smoky obstacle, and that's the way to the that's palace. Right. And then I think you said there was another one down the other route, which was leading to that palace to our south, or I suppose now it would be our south uh, east. And I think there was another one yes. there, I think you said. Okay, so basically there was one of these sort of creatures here that was blocking the way. There was another one over here that was blocking the way. Now, you defeated the one to the east, sorry, to the west. So I'll remove that one. But as far as you know, the other obstacle is still there. Wow. And these are the 12 foot tall flaming demons. That's yeah. right. Wow. Now, you were able to get to um, that large building that you can see at about sort of 12 o'clock just by following the red wall. So you don't have to take the demon on if you don't want to. Right. Krantz runs a finger down the massive crease in his skull, that, despite yeah. his great administrations. Uh, he's ruefully says uh, he's never going to do any modelling for front page of a magazine anymore. And um, <laughs> says, yeah, let's uh, let's avoid that if we can. You sure, you sure don't want to lop its head off, lad, like last time? I think that's I what your battle cry was. That. Yeah, I don't really remember much about that. Uh, I did get a lot of foam down the front and uh, bit my own tongue through, but apart from that, it was all okay. <laughs> well, that, and you don't really change your breeches when you make a mess of them going into that frenzy. <laughs> oh, so charming. Cool. Yeah, you don't, use, you don't, don't <laughs> want to lose that uh, perfectly wonderful uh, helm you got on. Yeah, it's gorgeous, this one. <laughs> right, so uh, my thoughts would be to avoid the maze, because if you remember what Bosco dreamed about... The place is surrounded by water or was submerged. Well, he had, One's got crystals. Yeah, the, you, he's had two dreams. So the portal rods are water and crystals. And then he had another dream. I think this was related to the Ashling Stone, which is the other thing you want, where there was an, another underground area, but you faced great and terrible danger if you went that way. So he's had two visions. Both of underground places, one with water and the other not. Mm. Um, so just to obviously give you a little bit more of an idea of what you can look at that big main coloured map. So you know roughly where the maze is. You may wish to avoid that. Um, if you follow the coastline round, as it were, of this island, can you see there's that sort of strange island, stonish island? that sort of sit out, sat out in the middle. Yeah. When you flew over that, it looked like some sort of uh, amphitheatre. And there's a little causeway that links the main island to this amphitheatre, which is set out on a great big rocky outcrop in the middle of this lake. Just before that rocky outcrop, there looks to be another gazebo or tiled area of some description. But it looked as you flew over to be open to the air. In the very centre of the island, there's a walled in area which had a large number of high stone buildings, most in ruins. But there was one towards the north east, which was intact. And it's quite a large building. Do we have any like priorities for the Ashling Stone? Where were people's <laughs> best reaction about where it's likely to be, be located here at the moment? 
all you know about the Ashling Stone is it's underground. That's all that Bosco's vision could tell you, mm. is that it's underground. Now, the Ashling Stone is something that will allow you to save the seer. Uh, the portal rods will allow you access to gates and will also give you some limited ability to break the curse on this place and manipulate time. So it will... And for any, any clue on their location? Well, the portal rods are something to do with an underground place where you can hear lots of water and they're surrounded by other crystals. The Ashling Stone is also in an underground place, but dark and full of terrible danger. And I think there was a large statue or something above it. Or in, in a room that's right. Statue. Yeah, that's right. It's on uh, the... It's in one of the game logs somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I'm just having a scan through. Because uh, otherwise we're kind of a bit blindly going around. At least if we had a kind of... Well, it's pretty dangerous walking around here, so we may want to go from point to point in the shortest possible distance we can. Um, in which case, it kind of doesn't matter too much. What... I posted it in chat. Yeah, thanks. I couldn't find it. So Sound of Water all around them would indicate to me that it's in kind of this part of the map right on the far side somewhere maybe one of those yeah. big buildings you've got a collection there. of islands which have been walled together yes could be don't forget that you've got that arena which is also kind of stuck out on a rocky outcrop am i misremembering but didn't one of the undead general mortillus that's yeah, right yeah is it the gen general kind of fought battles in a in a gladiatorial arena thing is he's supposed he to be underground in an arena um so i don't know if it's That's the same right. arena. no he was supposed to be he's waiting for you to release him he says if you can go to the underground arena where his body is but he doesn't know where that underground arena is unfortunately he just knows it's underground okay you think about we could look at the arena a bit because it is an arena it's a bit of a coincidence maybe there could be more than one arena yeah, and why don't we head there on the way to like the big castle type thing on the taking out most of the northern island in the little island chain on the right and kind of head around roughly around the coast to try and avoid as many of those demons as we can and see if we can get all the way to the arena, check that out and then go to the castle. Yeah, there. Sound reasonable? Okay. So you want to check out the mm. amphitheatre and then go across to those collections of islands? Yep. Yeah. What we... What we are leaving behind, though, is the uh, the noble quarter, which is where that's... we are. It's pretty close at the moment, but I don't know. That's there. Yeah, yeah, right in the middle. Bit close, bit close yeah, to that deep, so... unfortunately. Was that where the kids were trying to get us to climb over walls? And I stuff? thought that was the no, garden. The kids were trying to get you into the garden, which is further south. So the well, garden area is there. If you've got a good plan to help me ambush that bastard, I don't mind taking the demon out. But I need a bit of a break first. And, uh, <laughs> bit of a run up. Bit of, bit of a sleep, and then uh, then I'll be good. I'm not sure. I mean, well, at the end of the day, that. these are reasonably powerful artifacts. Would they be in a noble's dwelling, or would they be something quite major in the city? Yeah, my, assumption would be, my, my assumption is already fallen flat, that unless we haven't found a way down below this area this building we're in that would be my first guess um, as the completionist let's go everywhere <laughs> <laughs> right can, gm can you get it into two meter square hexes or something uh or yeah. two meter square squares and then we will <laughs> num number them all and we will go zigzag up and down the island until we find it <laughs> okay like, for you yes <laughs> that might take me a while <laughs> <laughs> It's probably, do you know what, it's, I'm recalling all of those first D&D &D games that I had when you knew a room was probably empty, didn't matter, you searched it. Yeah, search every square okay. inch. Okay, so you've searched you out the crypts, halfway through. you found some things. So, I mean, you've actually done, I say done for the completionist, you've found <laughs> lots of buildings. Mark, I mean, way. you've come across uh, at least three areas that didn't look promising, but you haven't explored totally. So probably Silk is now getting extremely twitchy when you suggest going somewhere else. But that's fine. None of them were, were anywhere near water. Didn't we? We entered the island from from the south. That's right. And did and we and we sort of moved up the the western side of the island to where we are now? Is, is that that's the sort right. of general area that yeah. we traversed along? Okay. So yeah. unfortunately, north north is that way. 
North is towards the yeah. Uh, as you look side. at the map, though, so you kind of went here and then up this way. Yeah, yeah, we went up that wall line, kind of headed yeah. up that way, and then that that's way. right. Yeah, the eyes have it. The eyes have it. <laughs> yeah, X is equal <laughs> okay. checks. That's the rule. New, new speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Noble Quarter, maybe some nice bed there for tomorrow night. Okay, so you're going to head basically down the way that you came. That means you don't have to fight that demon creature because the entrance that you're looking for is here. Oh. Uh -huh. Or you could climb over a wall. It's entirely up to you. No, nah, I mean, we say the conclusion that says enter the front door and go through it all. <laughs> I mean, we can Probably. go that way out otherwise. I like the idea of going over the wall at the back and trying to get to, but I'm happy to go elsewhere. If we can climb it, let's climb it then, because it'll shave off some time patrolling around and getting into encounters. But then again, okay. Victor, did you say come in through the front that way, then we could always exit out the back? Yeah, I mean, we can jump over the wall and then exit through the entrance. Yeah, later. Okay. yeah so you're going for uh, let's be plebs and climb over walls. Yeah. <laughs> Ninjas. I don't, know why I, I don't know why I spent so much time mapping bloody gates and door. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go through yeah, the entrance. I wonder why. I like to go <laughs> through the front door. <laughs> oh, thank you. You wait till you see the map for the front. <laughs> okay, let's okay, do so it yeah, for sure can, then. You can climb over a wall at the front. No, sure. We'll, we'll, no, we'll do it's all right. <laughs> let, let me just mask what I've got and then I'll share what I can with you. Give me a couple of seconds. Well, uh, wherever there's uh, some major towers with a lot of potential withering crossbow fire focused on yeah. us, can we go through that entrance? Funnily and enough, you, you read my mind. <laughs> mute your mic, Jim. We don't want to hear the cursing that you're going to That's fine. So, I'm assuming you're going to approach from the north. So as you begin to climb over the wall, you can see some ruined outbuildings to your left. Vaguely out through the murk, you can see what looks like the only intact building and probably one of the biggest buildings in the city in terms of roof size across this way. You can dimly see it through that murk, which means it's very big. You can also see, however, there are a large other ruined walls and complexes um, dotted about whatever this walled area is. Can you all give me um, perception rolls, please, as you complete climbing over the wall? Presumably we're still hearing the weird different sounds of different time. Yes, you can. Only there seems to be one sort of slightly high-pitched set of voices. I say slightly high pitched and you hear the same phrases repeated over and over again. Now oh, that'll cost a lot of money. Well, that'll cost a lot of money. I don't know where it's going to come from. I really don't know where it's going to come from. But that'll cost a lot of money. And then everything Cranmutt goes is under his breath. Oh, bloody hell, it's my mother-in-law. I was, I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, can you, uh, let's see. So um, Victor Silk. Uh, basically, everybody apart from Cran, who's still struggling with his makeshift pot helm that he found. Um, you can see what look to be four diminutive little shapes just step out of the filth. They look like sort of slightly short humans. So they're only about five foot, almost dwarfs, but they're very, very slender. All of them are dressed in what look like grubby overalls, very, very pale skin, and their heads are slightly too large. They look across at you, and one of them opens his mouth, but without forming the words, you hear that, well, that'll cost a lot of money. And he looks at you, and he opens his mouth again, but just leaves his mouth open, and again, well, that'll cost a lot of money. And they just stare, stare at you. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> another one then steps out so there are now four and he looks across at his friends and grins and says well i bet that'll be a lot of money to fix i bet that'll be a lot of money to fix hmm. and then a Oi, fifth steps just out. shut up a minute for fuck's a sake steps what, out. what's broken and what costs a lot of money <laughs> a fifth steps out and says 
Do you want tea with that? Do you want tea with that? Well, that'll cost a lot of money. Well, that'll cost a lot of money. And they begin to edge a little bit closer. Uh, I'm going to grip my sword particularly hard in both hands and like gurn at them in a slightly menacing way. Only crank out. Okay. They grin back. Can you give me perception rolls, please, all of you? Can Ugnan grab a fistful of coins for his purse, not gold? Yep, you can grab some copper coins. As you look at these, and there are five of them coming across. They're not very big. They are look like slender dwarfs, for want of a better phrase. They're not wearing any boots. They're wearing shabby gardening clothes, is, is the only way I can describe them. But they're just saying the strangest, inappropriate things. And they're saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, which you can't help but notice, given the strangeness of this damn place, is their heads are too large, their mouths are too wide, and their teeth are pointed. Can uh, I'm going to fling some coins off to one side, not at them, but just off reasonably near to them to see if they pay the, the coins any attention? Okay. You get a handful of coins and you um, fling them across. They don't really seem to respond to the coins at all. They look across at them, but actually just seem to ignore them totally. Uh, they've paused. They're now about, oh, I don't know, uh, about 40 feet away from you. There are five of them. And then you can hear some more voices, but much more distant. Again, saying the oddest but most mundane things. I'd like a sandwich. I'd like a sandwich. I'd like a sandwich. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have done that. I'd like a sandwich. Almost like a brain lock kind of thing. It sounds like AI gone bad. Uh, <laughs> Ugnan's going to start preparing a, a sudden light spell. Okay. Well, the creatures pause. There are five of them now. And, of course, they are just being just uh, odd. Sorry, I just dragged the wrong thing on the combat tracker. Let me delete that. But is their attention otherwise directed at us? So they're, they're, they're Oh, yes. No, their attention us. is fully on you. There are five of them, and they've edged closer, but they're keeping their distance. But you can hear more of these things piping up with those strange. And their voices are, as I said, slightly high-pitched, so not quite right. Pinocchio? Yeah. Yes. If you, if you can think about the of the Pinocchio sketch, yes, very much like that. Hmm. But the sounds are clearly coming from their mouths. So, oh, so yes, but the they're not forming any words. Yes, too. they are, but they're just not forming any words, which is even odder. Hmm. Crunch rocks and just walk, starts walking. <laughs> yeah, that's a good move. Yeah, but let's, let's just try and move past them and see if they okay. react. Okay, um, Cran, you start moving towards them. I'm just going to... <clears throat> jump into the combat tracker unfortunately <laughs> well, that, well that, that worked well didn't it <laughs> as you move across they also um begin to close in on you they continue to mutter exactly the same things as they were doing only they seem to be a little bit more excited and their mouths are now open so i'm just going to give them some numbers we wait to see what they do to cran <laughs> okay so ask not uh, what they can do to you ask what <laughs> you can do to them uh, okay so there's one there they don't look exactly oh, like this I was going to uh, say <laughs> so can I please have some initiative rolls could you please? give us the uh, combat tracker yeah thanks I uh, I was Booted oh, up. look at these initiative oh. numbers already. Oh, yeah. oh I think I, I, think I might shit. be able to beat that. You're dead, Graham. <laughs> I mean... Uh, uh, he said what? in a supportive way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ha! Balls. Archie. Those are some serious initiatives. Okay. Still, still got top. That's un unbelievable. When he that's says totally it's unbelievable, just... what he actually means is that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> that. I have to roll more than My two magic ones. stat isn't that high. So, so, Silk, these creatures are muttering these weird in uh, phrases, um, but they're advancing towards you, and well, frankly, they look hungry. 
but they're not very big. I mean, they're, they're not muscular at all. Right. Yeah, she's going to just hang out where she is, and she'll just watch what they do to Cran. I'll, I'll delay myself to just after them. Oh, <laughs> no. gee, says Cran. Thank you so much. <laughs> just to see what they do. I got, I'm just in. Thanks very much. Broad shoulders. I can handle it. Don't worry. Okay. One of the creatures runs up to you, Cran, and tries to basically bite you. Sorry, it tries to lash out with a claw at you. Um, it's not a particularly strong attack at all. And it is deflected off your heavy armor with some ease. As that blow sort of tings off one of your uh, arm greaves, you realize that these creatures aren't very powerful at all. They're, they're really almost childlike, but they are hungry. And We're killing an entire kindergarten. This is terrible. And as another one comes in, they are very hungry. In fact, Cran, having said that, can you give me a perception roll? Oh, no, they're not children, are they? Oh, no. Yeah, these are children. Or were oh, children. Fuck. <laughs> oh, yes, even better. I wait oh, till uh... after Cran when it comes to my turn. GM, what are you <laughs> doing to us? We don't need these moral conundrums. So the second child tries to attack you but again it's not very strong though it's its hand as it as it catches makes a scratching sound and to your horror you notice that not only do these well, demonic children have really enlarged heads their skin is very very pale their teeth are definitely pointed their breath is foul and their claws are well claws well, just like and... any other toddler then. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear come on <laughs> your children have grown up there were good days that's true um so another one of these children comes in and now you're being surrounded cran and even though these are children obviously you know if any more of these arrive gosh they could overwhelm you anyway this other creature sorry the demonic yeah, child comes now. in to try and hit you and it fails as well. They can't get past your heavy armor. And they're too short, really, to go for the throat. The other demon comes at you, Victor. And it tries to attack you with its claw or yeah. clawed hand. And that manages to bypass your armor. You take a scratch. It's not a heavy wound at all. You only take um, seven points of damage. Just a, a moderate wound. Oh, it manages to do yeah. a B slash, <laughs> which, well, a one takes off my head. Causes no damage at all. No. But as soon as it, you're scratched, to your horror, you mm -hmm. notice that your wrist begins to go numb. These creatures, these demons, are clearly laced with some sort of sedative. Can you give me a resistance roll, please? So that's a constitution resistance roll, please. That's where they you deviate from normal children. children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they're still energy vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, so your arm goes numb, and for a minute, you know, your fingers tingle, and you lose all sense in your fingertips. But this scratch wasn't very deep. You didn't take too much of whatever this strange narcotic is. Uh, the second one comes round the ruined and is coming towards you, Numel. But as it lopes across the floor, it kind of stumbles on the ledge of that building and doesn't quite get to you in time. Which gives you an opportunity to hit it, run away, or do oh, something else. So... I, I think we need to put them out of their misery. It would be a kindness. Yeah, That's same with all children. Uh, you leave you. <laughs> 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 Definitely edit that, please. Yes. <laughs> That's going to get a shut down. <laughs> Swearing, the sharing of files, but it's that. That's going to get a shut down. Yeah. Exactly. You, well, you know it is. You can share files. <laughs> If you threaten children, that's it. There'll that's be the right. police on your door. You'll have a that's social right. worker coming round. Yeah. I'm not threatening children. It's just like just the entire <laughs> entirety of uh, child kind. It's not a specific child. 
the world view yeah okay so it's, people, it's, it's, it's get, please get us back get us back some sanity what do you want to do <laughs> so you can so, uh, so is it my is it my round or not? yes it is so you can move in and attack with uh shinin's sword if you want which is that demon sword uh and these things are clearly sadly demonic yes uh, that, that is what i'll do so um, i'm going against is it number two Child yep, number two. number two. So you step in. So just make sure you drop the uh, dice on that number two, if you'll pardon the phrase. Okay. Well, the creature seems unable really to defend itself and just kind of grins at you as your sword lashes out and hits it. Uh, nine points of damage only, though, I'm afraid. Ugnan, what do you want to do to these child demons? I'm going to sudden light them. So he shouts, Frasita! Okay. Ah, oh, duck! <laughs> He'll have to be round crab. He's got three round him. Uh, shouting, jumping up wildly, and uh, moving slightly to bring him within ten feet. Okay. I'll keep my eyes closed. Oof. I thought that was an O one for a minute. Okay, so your spell goes off. They get to make a resistance roll, do they? Oh, yeah. To yep. be blinded. Well, All right. So I think it's, uh, well, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. So they're still muttering the, well, that'll cost a lot of money. Well, that'll cost a lot of money. Do you want tea with that? Do you want tea with that? I'd like a sandwich. Uh, oh, sorry, stunned uh, uh, one round 10 failure. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the first one. Attack level nine. Yeah. Is not. The second one is and that's going to be so let me have a look so that one he's all right number one is clearly r rolls back and is clearly fumbling and scratching at his eyes but he's still saying the same thing i'd like a cup of tea i'd like a cup of tea but he's clearly been affected by the spell and number three similarly is also so three and one are affected by the spell four three, is three and one right? are affected one isn't they're both okay. fumbling at their eyes. Um, obviously, you can't tell how many run rounds they're stunned for, um, but they're clearly struggling. Okay, and they'll use the um, last 25% to draw um, his hand axe. Yep. That's him. Victor, it's your turn. You can crush this child if you wish. Okay, Victor is going to take out Remorse and uh, attack number five. Okay. Uh, first heat blade. Uh, right. So that is so that's on number five. five. Yep. So that's nine points of damage on number five. So it's not enough to do a critical, I'm afraid. So yeah. now you're going to have to do your cold attack. Yes. Uh, wow. 159 didn't do a critical. That must be really fast. Hold on a minute. Yeah, the Renits are high, so that means... Hold on a minute. Be, no, I'm sorry. Good, yeah. I used... I think I resolved the wrong thing. So that is a critical. I'm sorry. I must have resolved the wrong thing. That was 30 points of damage. <laughs> sorry, with that attack. Okay. Better get that one right. Uh, which is enough to almost drop the creature totally. So as your blade swings into it, it almost decapitates this child, catching it across... Well... The midriff, I guess. Give me an E slash critical first of all, and then we'll roll the A heat critical. Oh, oh dear. my God. <laughs> nice. All right. So you basically decapitate the demon. Oh, dear. So you cut it in half, killing it instantly. Rest in peace. Over here, so yeah. not the end. <laughs> he says. Demon child murderer. You'll... Mess. You'll, nothing will happen to you. Cran, it's your <laughs> turn. You've got three of these things around you. I'm sorry about that, Victor. I resolved the wrong damn thing in the uh, stand. Yeah, it's no problem. I'm draw, I'll am draw. i draw Shieldbreaker. Okay. First time it's been drawn today. So um, all manner of things happen, I think. Yes. <laughs> Shines brilliantly when unsheathed, unsheathed and strikes all creatures of darkness within 250 feet with a shock bolt plus 50 oh. bonus at a range of 100, 1 to 100. So all of these, it's a plus 50. Right. Let me get out the shock bolt table and we can resolve that. Um, can you target more than one creature in Rollmaster? No. 
No, God. Okay, well, at least look at all the dice I can roll. That'd be exciting. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a shot block table in front of me. So, do you, oh, shall I just you roll do... dice at plus 50? Yeah, and I can then and basically then can... apply the results. Uh, I, oh, I this is shot... depressing. Shot bolt number one. Right, so 92 shot bolt is nine points of damage on that one. It's on two, yeah. Plus, you also do a B electricity critical. Off you go, roll that one. So that's one point of damage extra on number one. Oh, that was sorry, on, on number two. I'm on number sorry. two, yeah. Okay, the okay, next one. So the creature is badly injured. Okay, and the next. That's six points of damage on number four. And you also do an A electricity critical. Uh, 80. That's better. This uh, bolt fires out from Shield Breaker, catches the child in the upper chest, um, is going to stun it for two rounds, and does another nine points of damage. So the creature is almost knocked off its feet and reels away, stunned, clawing at the burn and what looks like almost a neat seared hole in its chest. And the next. Ooh. No, bad roll. And that's four points. No other critical, I'm assuming. Nope. Okay, and the final uh, one. Sorry, no, one. no, I'm sorry. You've managed to sneak in an A critical. Give me 100. Or oh, 94. 94 is not bad. <laughs> okay, you strike it across the hip. Okay, so this foe is stunned uh, again. Okay, the last uh, one. And that's the last one. So which one is this? Number three. Number three, yeah. Uh, and that just does four points of damage, but no critical. So, okay, so you've drawn your sword. Now what do you want to do? And I'm right in saying four is the only one that wasn't stunned. So at the moment, uh, number five is stunned. Number four is stunned. Number three is stunned. And okay. number two is not stunned. Okay, what I'm going to attempt to do, because they've got small puny necks and they're only children, and it would look amazing, is take all their heads <laughs> off in one blow. So let me know what you, what modifier you would want to attack all three of them in an amazingly <laughs> powerful horizontal slash. Uh, it's been a while <laughs> since you've played Rollmaster, isn't it, John? It, it, it okay. really is. Right. Um, so basically you're trying to do a grand cleave and yep. take all their heads. Um, <laughs> Meta gaming role master basically doesn't allow you to hit more than one opponent. But I, I know. Give me a sheer folly. Okay, so uh, sheer folly minus fifty. So you basically uh, look like you're about to compete in the Highland Games and hurl the hammer. So it would obviously be uh, number three to start with. Um, yep. I've applied sheer folly, and I'll attack with shield breaker. <laughs> <laughs> fumble. That is a that that is a fumble. That's absolutely a fumble. Nice. I think she'll, she'll okay. Scott. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, oh, guys. Right. I'll uh, have a lovely weekend. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back next week. Well, over. Well, well, <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so give one me. Of the uh, so it's a two-handed fumble. Yep. That's so not gonna go well. just a straight D100, please. I'm just behind you. you slice. You Oh, oh dear! Oh, Lifting it. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Incredibly bad move. You are stunned and unable to parry for three <laughs> long. <laughs> oh! So you basically spin round to try and catch all three with a muttered "Look at this!" and turn round and <laughs> drill yourself into the ground and stumble as your gammy left knee gives way. Oh, me back! <laughs> I've done an oh. ugly. So. Um... <laughs> So that was uh, done for three rounds. Yuck. Okay. Yeah. okay. Do you want me to apply that, or uh, I've just you've done, done it. that? Yeah. Hey, it's stun no parry, isn't it? Uh, oh yes, it is, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh so, dear. Not ideal. Okay. Well, Silk. thank you. Hold on. Okay. Why are you down there? I, I delayed. I, I okay. was like, I'm, I want to see what happens to Cran. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've seen what happens to Cran now. So. I have. So she'll move uh, 10, 15, and uh, take the other side of this demon 
she doesn't have her glowing hands, but she's just punching them. And again, it's like she wants to be in visceral hand-to-hand combat with demons. It's, it's oh, that's right, because you went hand-to-hand last time to good effect. Yeah, yeah. So she's gonna uh, do a martial arts strike. I think I've got. Uh, I've got her fine. Oh, damn! That is, and it's only rank. I should warn you. <laughs> Here's the rub: is yeah. it's only rank one. <laughs> rank one. Yeah, <laughs> that's still fifteen points on number three. Oh wow! And you've done a, a B unbalancing critical. Sorry, a B strike critical. Ooh-hoo. Shana would be so proud of you. Well, that's it. Oh, eighty-five crit. Wow. Okay, there you go. So you kick the foe's arm. Uh, you hear a crack as you break the child's wrist. Oh, that that her her wound. Uh, just and the break. creature sort of looks at you and says, "Well, why did you break that? Why did you break that? Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for that?" Uh, so that's number three, isn't it? That you've just done that too. There you go, Cherry. I think for the sake of this, we'll come round to here and ready her weapons, and we'll have initiative rolls, please, folks. Okay, Silk, the creature is facing you. You can kick it, punch it, strike it again. Remember, it's struggling with a broken wrist to do anything. And obviously, the bright light and the electricity that Cran fired off, all four, well, all four of these things are struggling. Okay, and I failed to take off the minus five for movement last time, so I'll do that this time. Okay. Um, and uh, it's facing me. You said it turned around to face me. So yeah. Punching it in the face. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it's still enough. It's more of a slap to the face. So you slap this child for one point of damage. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> low. Stop it. Behave. Yeah. Done. Okay. Number five is. Why is I'm not sure? Yes, is stunned. So it will stay motionless and just mutter and gibber. So will. Oh, number two isn't. Who is number two? There he is. So number two will attack you, Numel. I uh, think Numel had to leave. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. I can worry about that. And a claw, and that misses. And number four and number three are still stunned, and that takes us as to Numel, who will then make his attack on number two. Oof, that might be enough to hit. But isn't uh, so, Ugnan, it's your turn. Ugnan uh, reaches in, grabs a well well, which is stun relief for three rounds, and sort of reaches round and shoves the leaf into Crown's gob. Stop twirling around like a fucking idiot. <laughs> no, yes, more Don't drugs. Don't waste my <laughs> you <laughs> you it. That's right. Oh, yeah, well, you're you're says, that's that. mine. <laughs> Let's roll those dice. AF3. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, oh. Okay. okay, so Victor. let me take those stun rounds off you, Cran. So that so means Cran's you nostrils to... flare and his eyes go very wide. <laughs> like the ball. Don't worry, Victor, there's 12 left. Oh. <laughs> Victor, <laughs> enraged at the sort so- of right. his drugs being <laughs> at a plus two. Back, it's Ugnan. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to move around. Uh... Silk, I'm up to there. Uh, uh, attack number three. Oh, blimey. Uh, so number three, um, that's a 30 ES, which is going to be enough to obviously kill it, but you might as well roll the E slash critical just sure. for the lols. Ah. 31 would be minus side win but anyway that's number three he said no number three yeah number three yeah number three so he is down uh, dead it's hilarious um, dealing these minor side wounds to defenses yeah yeah that's also got to be removed it's hilarious dealing these minor side wounds to helpless children <laughs> that's got to go so- as well Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm giving you a lot of ed- editing to do here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you can't get a second attack out because that would mean switching. 
Um, okay. But, you, know, um, you can only fine. get those two attacks on the same opponent. Yeah. Okay. Cherry. I think we'll take the opportunity and sneak in and possibly have a go with her. Um, um, got her katana too, I think. Yeah, she's got a katana as well, so she'll have a go on number five. And that's a miss, actually. She almost fumbled. Cran, your turn. Okay, learning his lesson from last last round is ignoring anything other than just a standard attack. So it's still facing me, so there's no bonuses like flanking or anything on this. No. Okay. No. Uh, well, it's, you know, stunned, so you'll get a bonus automatically to built in. Oh, that's going to smart. Wow. Uh, funnily enough, that's off the table. So that's 48 points <laughs> and an E slash critical. So that is going to obviously decapitate it. Roll your E slash. So these are demons, aren't they? So this is open-ended. Is yeah. Right? 29. That's all. Oh, dear. Uh, so a 29 is another 15, sorry, another 20 hits. So that's going to be enough to kill number five. Dross. Oh. And that's it. Initiative rolls, please, folks. Ooh. And looks like Silk is going first. Woohoo! Uh, I, I take a quick look at Cran. Is he frothing at the mouth or anything? No, he's completely calm. No, he's calm. After a failed heroic move, he's probably feeling a little bit chagrined and is just concentrating on putting these down as efficiently as possible. Yeah, that's not normal. So she kind of looks at Victor, kind of shrugs, and again, eyes blazing, wanders and <laughs> thinks of Sharna. Oh, open oh, ender, God. nice. Look at her go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> rank one. Okay, okay, like so I, is, I feel uh, like so Silk is rank one, Donkey isn't Kong. It? Yeah, max rank one. Okay, so that's 15 points again on number four, and you also do. A critical on it. Low crit. 28. Is a side strike. So you punch it across the side and the ribs. And there's a crunch as you break some of its ribs. Obviously, those ribs do, as they break and shear, do a lot more damage than perhaps your strike did. And there's a cough. There's a froth of sort of black fluid from its mouth and nose. And it topples forward. Oh. Down. Silk is very happy with that and spits on it. So uh, there's just one left facing Jan. It's still stunned. It's then Numel's turn. That one. That's actually another miss. He's not doing very well. Ugnan, your turn. He'll have a go. He'll step forward and try and hit one on Jan. Come on, Ugnan. You got this, buddy. All right. Oh, there we go. I'll twirl red like an idiot. <laughs> oh, be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a miss. I thought so. Uh, Victor, your turn. Yeah, Victor's gonna uh, scan the area for more. Chill okay, room. give me a perception roll. You can still hear voices, but they're distant. Give me a perception roll. See if you can yep. pick up anything else. Yeah, the voices are very quiet, um, and there are, you think, three of them. And they're somewhere down towards the southwest, but quite a long way off, and they don't seem to be approaching you. Okay. Uh, Cran, your turn. Okay, uh, Cran, watch out there, Ragnar. You give yourself a mischief, and uh, it'll walk around and skewer <laughs> two with Shieldbreaker. Yeah, that would be skewered, I think. 48 points, and you've done uh, a critical. So you want to make that high open ended? So 77 would be shatter the shoulder in foe's weapon arm, 15 hits. Foe is stunned, etc., etc. As your blow catches this child demon across the shoulder, the sword, the power behind shield breaking continues on down, crunching through ribs, crunching through whatever organs this thing has, only stopping at the creature's hip bone. It's dead. I'll lever it off as it falls to the ground. Bloody irritating. Okay. If we're still in combat rounds away, otherwise I'll give uh, Victor an acupuncture. 
Just a leaf. No, you're no longer in combat, so you can give Victor Acubutej, if you wish. AF1, um, Victor, yeah. your choice. 1 to 10 damage, or you can just keep your 7 hits up to you. Nah, I can keep myself like this. Thanks, anyway. Okay. Uh, Victor shares what he saw or okay. heard. So there are more of these creatures quite a long way to the south, but not many of them. They're not really approaching you. You stand amongst the ruins of what what look like some crude cottages. Can you give me perception rolls, please? Bugnan, you notice that the ground you're standing in or standing around looks to be tilled and free of vegetation. Though vines and weeds have begun to overgrow this part, you're clearly standing in what was perhaps once gardens, not flower gardens, but tilled almost allotment gardens. The ruined cottages that Cran and Numel stand in were perhaps once gardeners' cottages. Okay, pass that on. Everything is quiet once you've killed those creatures but you can dimly hear those muttering voices away to the southwest you know there's a larger building across to the southeast does that take us into the path of the other ones that victor saw well, victor didn't see he heard voices uh, okay. down towards sort of this direction as you've made your way through the gardens, um, just towards that southern bit, you can see that you've come across a noticeably different style of architecture. Um, the building that Victor now stands at the edge of was clearly some sort of elaborately constructed white stone. Well, it looks like a small chapel shrine or temple of some description. Cran, you can make out just across to the west what looks like a crude, sorry, not crude, uh, a well-trod flagstone road or path, probably too wide to be a path, that leads across to the east. The ground that you're standing in is soft underfoot, is remarkably free of vegetation and weeds, although some have begun to encroach. Mm. This is obviously you stand in the middle of what was perhaps once tilled farmland for somebody. What do you want to do? Standing in the centre of this ruined shrine or small chapel or temple is a, a nine foot tall stone humanoid. He reaches out with his right hand as if pointing at something and is totally mm. naked. Mm, the first statue we've really seen, and we're looking for something below a statue, so... Yeah. Victor will approach the statue. Okay. Just scan it. Ugnan okay. watches. Give me a perception roll then, please, Ugnan. The floor that this statue stands on has clearly been damaged and badly eroded by time. You can see most of the floor is probably a, a white flagstone, which has been laid on top of some crude brick slabs. The statue itself, or the base around the statue, has been quite badly damaged, but there's no indication of any trapdoor or anything of that ilk. Um, certainly if there was, you can't see any, obviously, any obvious uh, means of pulling up a platform at all around the statue. The Not statue itself is human, has a pleasant demeanour, is totally naked, and is pointing across down the roadway. You can't help but notice, however, Victor, that the statue's penis is rampantly erect. Oh. Victor, I, I think it might oh. be a trap door. Could you just pull the um, hidden handle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. I've seen that before. It's pointing the wrong way. Are you sure? You yeah, have, you have every to, time. It's hydraulics. You have to pump it up. Both hands. <laughs> both hands. Make sure both hands. <laughs> Oh, dare me. <laughs> Spit in your hands. Spit in your hands. <laughs> okay, Magic, let's take you are worse. revealing far too much to us. <laughs> See, well, I, went to a, I went to a live. you have a mullet, you had a very strange upbringing in rural Canada. <laughs> I, I had a child. You uh, need to tell you. us nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Victor, the statue doesn't seem to be well it seems incapable of concealing anything there doesn't seem to be any obvious platform though what could be a rather obvious lever could mm. be pulled 
if you wish. Tugged. Tug it. Or tug, <laughs> if you wish. And if it fights yeah. back, you got to really bear down on it. We're really appealing to our 15-year-old streamers <laughs> now. <laughs> That's right. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cran is not yeah. amused and goes on guard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, Vic's going to pull the lever. <clears throat> You're going to pull on the lever. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't budge. It is, in oh, fact, solid stone. It's not a lever. Keep working at it. No, no, it's a lever. <laughs> keep working at it. Turn if around you, and between yeah. your legs. <laughs> you know that if you... I'm gonna, I wish I hadn't put this bit into the module, but you know that if you pull on it any harder, two things will happen. First of all, it will break. It will come off in your hand. It'll secondly, release. As your mother said, you'll go blind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wish to carry on? God, yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Tugging Victor, on the oh, lever. God, oh, God. Yes. All right. Oh, God, yes. The basic solid stone, if you pull any harder, it will snap off. Yeah. Sorry, lad. My mistake. Victor, I didn't your mother ever tell you right. that you would turn to stone if you touched that area? Look, this giant man <laughs> turned to stone because obviously he was... Okay, <laughs> do you actually want to break this off? It's it's a fairly important question. Do you want yes. to break? You do. No. And that's where we're going to leave this one with Victor snapping the phallus off a presumably fertility guard. Don't think it's going to end well, which you'll see next episode. Thanks very much for watching or listening uh, or subscribing or following on Podbean. Thanks very much for those of you who clicked the follow on Podbean. That moved us off the very last page onto uh, the second page. Wow. If another 12 of you ever did that, we'd be uh, on the first page. <gasps> Amazing. Anyway, cheers. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.